Hi guys, I'm sorry about the quality here, but I am just gonna try to fit in a quick video. Um, in this video, what I'm going to talk about is how to break a trauma bond and what is a trauma bond. Um, so to, to understand what a trauma bond is, you have to understand how a trauma bond is created. Um, basically, it is created through something called intermittent reinforcement or inconsistent reinforcement, where somebody will love bomb you and then devalue you. It's also um, called operant conditioning. And so there's love bombing and then devalue, love bombing and then devalue. And this is the strongest type of reinforcement. This is what you think is love is actually a trauma bond. And this is very um, typical in abusive relationships. And keep in mind, when I'm talking about abusive relationships, I am not talking about just physically abusive relationships or even just verbally abusive relationships. There's also psychological and emotional abuse. And that could be in the form of silent treatment, neglect, withholding of um, sex, withholding of um, you know intimacy, withholding of information, withholding of communication. And somebody could be just giving you the silent treatment and ignoring you or stonewalling walling you. They could be gaslighting you. Um, they could, there could also be physical or verbal abuse. But um, when I'm talking about abuse, I'm talking about the, all the different spectrums of abuse. So there's abuse. So somebody could completely neglect you for a, a period of time, for weeks or whatever, not respond to your text messages, not call you, not email you when you're married to them or in a relationship with them. And then they love bomb you. Or they could have sex with you, uh, you know, and then not have sex with you for a month. And it, you know, that's just what they use. And narcissists in particular use sex as a tool to get people bonded to them. Um, they use it, they withhold sex uh, to control. So that could also be a way that they're getting that intermittent reinforcement. And, you know, what's happening is... Um, when the victim is in this space and they've experienced this trauma bond, um, when there's the withdrawal of the person or the narcissist, then you're, you, you're going to start having actually withdrawal symptoms and you're going to try to get back to that. You're always trying to get back to that initial love bombing. You're trying to get those, that oxytocin and, and the dopamine and all those chemicals that you got from that initial love bombing. So it's, in these relationships, people are constantly like trying to um, sort of, you know, reestablish that original, you know, um, feelings of love, what they thought was love, but really it was just a tool of manipulation. And, you know, why we usually get into these relationships with a narcissist or a psychopath or sociopath or an abuser or an active addict is because we probably had somebody like that. We were probably raised by somebody like that. We were either raised by, we had a you know parent that was a narcissist or perhaps an active addict um, or somehow abusive. And so we, this is actually sort of normalized for us. And the thing to note about trauma bonds is this is a, you know, you're bonded to this person, both biologically and emotionally because again that inter that intermittent reinforcement that operant conditioning has you glued to them desperately trying to you know get that love bombing back right that's not normal. In a normal relationship, there's a consistency in love and a consistency in, um, you know, with with emotional intimacy and with sex and all those things. Um, it's a consistent, safe place in a normal relationship. But if you've been in one of these uh, relationships, you've been bonded to an abuser. And you know, basically, there's a lot going on with the neurochemicals, and you you have to sort of look at this like you are actually breaking an addiction to a toxic. relationship relationship, this toxic relationship cycle. And unfortunately, um, if you try to get into a normal relationship when you have been sort of conditioned for the narcissistically, you know, for, for a narcissistic relationship because you were raised with some trauma, then a normal relationship actually can feel sort of boring and shallow to you, which is quite unfortunate. But um, how do we break the trauma bond? Well, 
First, the thing you need to do is take a long, hard look at the relationship and what is really happening in this relationship. Like, are your needs being met on a consistent basis or is there, um, you know, is there abuse? Is there physical abuse? Is there, uh, you know, emotional abuse? Is there psychological? Is there verbal abuse? Is this person using, are they ignoring you? Are they neglecting you? Are they giving you the silent treatment? Are they stonewalling? Are they withholding sex? Are they withholding information? Are they withholding assets? Are are they controlling the assets? Um, are they physically hitting you? Are they verbally abusing you? Are they dismissive? Are they looking at you with uh, contempt? Are they treating you in a dismissive way as if what you say, what you think about, what you, how you feel, none of that matters? Um, look at this. And you might find if you take a good hard look at the relationship, you might find that you're actually in relationship with somebody that you don't even like and you don't really because they're, they're mean or or they're boring or they're not loving and they're not they're cold and they're um, devoid of emotion and they're sort of dead inside like that may be what the reality is so how do you break it well you need to step into reality and here's one way you can do this you can make a list of what they what actually happen how they actually treat you did they give you the silent treatment did they neglect you did they stonewall were they passive aggressively punishing you and abusing you did they withhold sex did they withhold information did they withhold um you know compliments did they hit you did they yell at you did they call you names um you know did they control money did they shame you you know what you know look at these things like is that actually happening is that what happened were they cheating on you did they have a porn addiction did they uh you know or was there infidelity you know all these things write down a list of all these things that they actually did so you can get into reality and get out of your fantasy it's very important that you get out of denial and you get very, very clear on the abuse and recognize that this is not a person that is going to change. They are not going to change. Um, it's very, very hard for narcissists to change because part of their defense mechanism is that they're perfect and there's nothing wrong with them and it's somebody else's fault. So um, that lack of self-reflection and introspection makes it very, very difficult for them to ever go to therapy, ever get any help or ever change because um, they think it's they don't think there's a problem and know this there is no justification for abuse I don't care what kind of abuse it is there is no justification and it doesn't matter that sometimes there were wonderful times look if these relationships were all bad there's no way you would be in it the love bombing is very compelling it is incredibly seductive the love bombing you know especially in the beginning of the relationship can make you feel like you are like you've never felt before you might feel like you're totally understood they really got you you, you feel listened to, you feel really loved. But again, if you're coming from a childhood that was filled with trauma, um, what you think is love might actually be, you know, what you think is chemistry might actually be your survival mechanism kicking in and telling you to run, which is really interesting. But, um, you know, basically, just so you know, it doesn't matter. You know, there's all the, of course, there's good times. And in your denial, you're going to focus on the good times. But I encourage you to step into reality by writing down what actually happened. And then you need to hear this, I think, and this is a hard one to hear, but I'm sorry, somebody who abuses you does not love you. That is not love. That's trauma. The narcissist is also addicted. They are also addicted to this cycle, but their addiction is less to the person and more to the narcissistic supply, which is why they have multiple people on the string that they're you know, addicted to the multiple different sources of supply. Um, so again, super important, live in reality, get out of the denial. And then another way to break the trauma bond, another thing that's really important is you've got to go no contact. And this is really hard to do, I get it. If you have children, it's so hard, but you've got to go no contact. And I think it's very, very hard to actually break free of the trauma bond if you don't go no contact, because you have to get out of the relationship to go no contact, to start getting away from this person and to start processing the reality of the situation. Because when you're in the trauma bond, your brain is like, you know, it's like pudding. You can't really um, make sense of things. So you're so bonded to this person in this really unhealthy way. So you might not actually see the truth of what's happening. And then, 
it's very important that you do engage in radical self-care. Um, I highly recommend trauma therapy um, and, you know, look at is it in my best interest to reach out to the narcissist, you know, or am I going to the dry well for water? Am I going to the, the hardware store for a loaf of bread? I really need to look at that. Like, you know, I keep going to someone for empathy who has none. And I, I, what I did is I would tell myself, I would say these mantras, I will no longer go to someone for empathy who has no, none. I will no longer go to the dry well for water. I will no longer go to the hardware store for a loaf of bread. This person, was never able to provide um, true emotional intimacy or um, any sort of n emotional nurturing to you. So like when you're going to this person for like empathy, they don't have any. So, and you know, it's not, it's not um, personal. They actually don't have any for anyone. They don't really bond. So, you know, you're trying to bond with somebody who can't bond with you. Um, it's also really important. I believe that you get a strong support group. Very important. There are some support groups on Facebook. There are 12 step recovery for codependents. I, I go to Codependents Anonymous. That's very been very helpful for me. Um, codependents are notoriously attracted to narcissists and vice versa. Um, there's also, just because you were with a narcissist does not mean you're a codependent. You could have other things and i um, not suggesting that everyone who's with a narcissist is a codependent, but I personally identify with that. Um, a lot of times codependents have more empathy for other people than they have for themselves. Um, they're sort of pathological givers. They tend to get with pathological takers. Um, so, you know, support group, self-control. It's going to take a lot of self-control for you not to reach out to the narcissist because you're reaching out for them to like fix that pain from that withdrawal and that trauma bonding withdrawal. And this is somebody who created it or participated in creating it. So they are not going to be able to fix it for you. It might be a temporary fix, but this is somebody who has no empathy for you. They don't give a rat's but for you, sorry, I'm being crass, but they're not bonded to you, unfortunately. And they're not bonded to the new source of supply or the old sources. People are just objects to them. You are basically a washing machine or, you know, you're a Maytag, you're a Whirlpool. It doesn't really matter. Um, you're there to serve their needs. Um, and then I really think it's important to, you know, you can start counting your days of no contact. There is a app that you can download on your phone. It's called Habit Bull, B-U-L-L. -L. Um, you can start counting your days of no contact from this toxic person. Um, and then very important, I think, to get a spiritual practice, um, whether it be you go to a church group or you go to, um, you know, a meditation group, you know, a spiritual practice I find has been very helpful for me. Um, meditation and prayer has been very, very helpful for me. And eventually, hear this, you will break this trauma bond. I know that it feels, if you're in the beginning stages, it's going to feel like, um, like just you're going to feel sick and like you're never going to be able to break this or heal from this. But I'm living proof that you will. And eventually, you'll get to the place like where I'm at, where I... I I would be repulsed to reach out to this person. Like it would be, it would cause me revulsion. I have literally no interest in ever seeing this person or communicating with them ever again. Like I just, it, it, I have no compulsion to do so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sickened by them in a way. So that I find, you know, you eventually will find yourself um, recoiling from them like a hot, as if they're a hot flame, which is a sane response given what you have been put through. Um, these people are, you know, um, I, repugnant. Um, so, and then also very important, I think that you do, you know, you do trauma therapy and also, or get a trauma coach. Um, I really think if you're going to get a trauma coach or a narcissistic abuse recovery coach, um, I personally believe it's very helpful to find somebody who's actually been through it because I find that it's one of those things where if you haven't been through it, this is very, very hard to understand. Your friends and family are going to have a hard time understanding it. Even some traditional therapists have a hard time understanding it because they either haven't been through it or maybe they haven't, they're not fully educated on the um, sort of nuances of narcissistic abuse and it's so important that you get support from others and 
You know, also go no contact with the flying monkeys and avoid the triggers. The triggers could be getting a text message. The triggers could be looking at their Facebook page, looking at their fair partner's Facebook page or Instagram, or hearing or communicating with the flying monkeys. Anything you're doing um, in that regard is very detrimental to your well-being. So no contact means no contact. Um, and I know that this is not an easy thing to do. Um, I recognize that um, you may have a slip and I just want to encourage you to not shame yourself if you have a slip you just get right back on the horse and you just keep going no contact and the more you go no contact what's going to happen is you're going to start getting out of the denial and getting some incredible clarity on the reality of the situation that you were in fact in an abusive relationship and you do not deserve to be abused and that's not love trauma bond is not love so um, I hope this was helpful for you um, feel free to like and subscribe if you like this content. If you click on the little bell, you can get notified when new videos become available. Um, if you're interested in uh, coaching, um, you can go to Coach Cat. Um, it's Coach K A T at O R G. Um, I am accepting new clients, and I'm also working on some um, video courses to help overcome narcissistic abuse. Those will be available on my website soon. So I hope you guys are thriving and doing radical self-care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.